Shalom is Brother Yashima Zakar from the Israelite Report, IsraeliteTimes.com. Upon my watch, all praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth in sincerity. Now, I have this clip of this asshole, um, Yuval Noah Harari, and um, he's going into Trump and Trump dividing America's allies. And um, he's like all upset about it and or he's pretending to be upset about it. But um, he's like, why, you know, you know, why is he doing this and this, that and the third? But. Trump is here to fulfill prophecy. Like I said before, I've said this before I say it again. Um, you know, I believe Trump is that guy. OK, but I'm going to play this clip. And let you listen to. <laughs> Harari, who was the same guy, by the way, who said that we can piss God off as much as we want. This this is what he said. OK. And past in a past interview. I forget who the interviewer was, but. um. You know, he basically said that, you know, if God bring the flood, so what? You know, because Esau believes that his technology has surpassed the most high. This is how proud this goddamn devil is, man. And you niggas need to understand. I say you niggas because some of you are, are still asleep and need to wake up. You're still in niggerdom, right? And you need to wake up and understand who the real children of Israel are. Um, the sons of God, sons of the most high power who you are um but Harari is basically um going in on Trump and saying that he's dividing the allies of America right or oh, he's separating America from his allies and He's a so-called small hat, small hat, um, if I'm not mistaken. I believe um, he's one of those J-ish people, you know, those who pretend to be Jews and are not or claim to be Jews and are not. Um, so anyways, um, I'm going to play this clip and then I'm going to come back and give commentary on it. Uh, just, you know, just listen and hear what this, this devil, this demon has to say. But when you look at the bigger picture of the world, what you can say about Donald Trump or what he's doing over the last two years is, is one very big and important thing he's doing. He's destroying the U.S. alliance system all over the world. I don't know why he's doing it, but in a very systematic way, he kind of, he's our, they are our friends, let's destroy that. They are our friends, let's alienate them. He's alienating America's friends in North America, Canada and Mexico, in Western Europe, in the, in the, in the Far East, uh, in South Korea, Japan. He's in a systematic way for reasons I cannot fathom. He's destroying the greatest achievement of, of the U.S. foreign policy for decades and decades to build this alliance, this global alliance system. This is a time for optimism. Fear and doubt is not a good thought process because this is a time for tremendous hope and joy and optimism and action. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. They are the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers, and I have them, and you have them, and we all have them. 
and they want to see us do badly, but we don't let that happen. They predicted an overpopulation crisis in the 1960s, mass starvation in the 70s, and an end of oil in the 1990s. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country, or eradicate our liberty. America will always be the proud, strong, and unyielding bastion of freedom. You want to go back to the old world. And that's, for example, also certainly one of the reasons uh, for um, the success uh, of uh, presidential candidate Trump. Um, you know, 10 years ago, like when I wrote Sapiens, the world had many problems, but we had an order. There was a global liberal order based on universal values. The basic message of the liberal order was that all human beings belong to the same species. Then you had this wave of populism, not just, you know, countries like Russia, but within the United States, within the European P uh, Union, uh, populists attacking liberal values and ideas, destroying from within the global order. Again, the very idea of global cooperation became synonymous with treason. You should only care about your country. And the result was that the order collapsed. They didn't offer anything to replace it. If they attacked the liberal order and said, OK, but we have an idea for a, a, a different order. These are the universal values we believe in. These are the global institutions we support. OK, let's talk about it. But they destroyed the order without offering anything to replace it. And when you destroy order, what you get is this order, chaos, violence. And if we don't restore a global order, then the scenes we now see in Israel and in Gaza, unfortunately, we will see them in more and more places around the world. So you heard this, this guy, uh, Yuval Noah Harari, go into um, his feelings on Trump. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, Trump, in my opinion, Trump is that guy. And the whole point of Trump is to come up as um, controlled opposition. To pretend to be someone that is fighting against the um, New World Order. And that's the great deception. And a lot of people are falling for it. Not just these Edomites, but even these Jakes are falling for it. All right. But Harari was going into how Trump is dividing America from his allies in the clip. And um, he's like, well, I don't know why he's doing it. Well, it's, pro it's prophecy. It's prophetic. That's supposed to happen. Okay. Revelation 17 and 16, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. What is that whore? Mystery Babylon, the great America. This bitch that we live in now called America, the United States of America. It's going to be destroyed with nuclear fire. And we pray sometime soon. Because if you're a man of the Lord and you're not praying for that, then you're not a man of the Lord. <laughs> what I mean by that, if you're calling yourself that and you're not hastening the day of the Lord, you're not really a man of the Lord. You, What you are is you're somebody that know that you're an Israelite, but the spirit isn't dealing with you. There's no way in hell you can be comfortable in this goddamn place. Right? There's no way. I hate this goddamn place. And if you don't feel that way, you're not a man of the Lord. I don't give a shit how uh, spectacular or beautiful your garment is with the, with the fringes 
the borders of blue. If you're not hastening the day of the Lord, if you don't want to get the hell up out of here like yesterday, then you're not a man of the Lord and you really don't believe. So good. I'm glad Trump is dividing America from his allies. Why? Because Revelation 17 and 16 and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. America. Right? The EU. Uh, America's allies. They're going to turn their back on America. Right? These shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Oh, yo, Shamar, you shouldn't be like that, brother. You should love people. But no, the Lord said <laughs> this place is going to burn with fire. Okay? That's the end game. That's the will of the Heavenly Father. For Yahweh had put in their hearts to fulfill His will. So fuck Yuval Noah Yaharari. The hell with him. That little, that little fucking demon small hat J ish you know one of those Jews that you know he he wish he was a Jew but he is not one of those the hell with him this is the will of the heavenly father for these uh allies of America to turn against America it's the most high's will Again, I'm gonna get it again. I know I'm beating it to a dead, uh, beating it into a dead horse. Uh, but I want to say this again. Um, and then it says here, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. That's nuclear fire. Okay. For Yahweh hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yahweh by Shem Shah shall be fulfilled. And that's what we want. We're going through our tests and our trials right now. Praying that we're closer to the day of the Lord's uh, will and his word being fulfilled because Esau can't go past that there's a limit there's a ceiling when he rolls out the mark of the beast which is was taking so long by the way for you you know you some of you I know some of you brothers are probably listening saying wait a minute they got the technology of the mark of the beast why don't they just roll it out well they're not going to enforce that microchip until the Lord gives them the green light, if that makes sense. You know, I don't know how many of the elect have been sealed already. I don't know. When they were commanded not to do anything of such, right? Until the the um, the righteous seal, right, is in the heads of the of the saints, the the true men of the Lord, his elect. Okay, it says, um, "For Yahweh have put in their hearts to fulfill His will." And to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yahweh should, shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is, the, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. 
All right. So that's what's happening. That's the reason why Trumpy, my main man Trump, Trumpy, is out there talking the shit that he's talking. Because the Lord put it in his spirit to talk the shit that he's talking and to further divide the U.S. from its allies. No, he's not deranged. He's not crazy. No, he's fulfilling uh, the will of the Lord because the Lord put the spirit on this nigga to act that way, to be that way, to say fuck NATO. Nobody else is doing it, but the Lord put the spirit on him and he just happens to have a mass following, a massive following. You understand? So when this nigga get back in the White House, shit is going to hit the fan real fast. I hope with at least within the first two years that he's in there. Okay, because he's already talked about getting out of NATO and not supporting NATO allies that doesn't pay the U.S., Okay, because he's supposed to be America first. Beautiful. See, the Lord put the spirit on him. Even if he's faking it, he's got to live up to that to some degree. Well, good. That's going to cause. Right. The beast to hate the whore. Because America's nothing but a whore. That's all it is. These nations come here just to get what they can get and then they leave or they send their money back home. You get it? Somebody had to stand in that lot and Lord willing, it's this nigga Trump. Okay, I want to talk about this right quick, break away from the from the news and just talk about, uh, you know, my my daily life. Uh, this is woman I know. <clears throat> she's in the world. You know, she's she's not even a Bible believer. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. But anyway, um, I guess the Lord put the spirit on her to you know kind of befriend me, and this is going back years. You know, uh, I would say mainly back to maybe 2018, somewhere around there. But anyways, um, she's not a Bible believer, but, um, you know, she's someone that knows that the, the system is corrupt and she knows that, uh, things ain't right and things aren't what they, you know, appear to be. And, um, you know, I don't beat her over the head with the, with the Bible or anything. Um. Cause not, it's just not my way, but she knows about the Illuminati and the new world order. And I, I'll just put it like that. And, um, so anyways, um, she knows that I'm an Israelite. You know, we had that conversation that I put it to you like that. We we're close enough to the point where we, you know, she tells me her stuff and I, you know, I tell her, look, I'm a man of the Lord. I believe in the Bible. You know, I'm an Israelite this that and the third and um so you know she's she's cool with that and um so she befriended me so anyway um she reached out to me on whatsapp uh last week and um you know she's going through something and um uh, you know, I, me being a man of the Lord, I just, you know, I'm always scriptural. You know, everything's biblical. And I was just, you know, kind of like telling her some of the things that I go through. And um, there were two scriptures that I, I, I gave her. And she responded back with, oh, wow, yeah, you're right about that. You know, 
she agreed with the scriptures. But again, keep in mind, this isn't, you know, somebody that's claiming to be an Israelite. You know, she is an Israelite, but she doesn't know it. Uh, she's not a Bible believer. But um, one of the scriptures I gave her was, uh, let me see if I can pull it up right quick. And it's a basic scripture that brothers pull out a lot. Um, Ephesians um, 6 and 12. But I'll start at 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh That ye may be able to to stand against the wiles of the devil, right? And the one that I gave her, of course, was 12th verse, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is just now I was sitting here and I was meditating and um, I have these moments where I sit there and, you know, I, I, I literally just sit there in a chair and, um, you know, just meditate and talk to the Lord. And, um, you know, one of my prayers, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, please just don't let me fail. You know, because, um, you know, I'm just a man here in this world. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And I'm just trying my best to make it. That's all, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. You know, you, you try to be as righteous as you can. But at the end of the day, you're just a man. <laughs> and a righteous man falleth seven times. May he get back up. So, you know, I was just sitting there praying. And the thought came to me. This, you see, this is how spiritual everything is. I sent her that scripture, to, you know, just to give her an idea. Because... The conversation was, you know, she was telling me what she's going through. And I was kind of like telling her like a little bit of what I'm going through. Because, you know, it's a friend of mine. Like, you know, it's been like since 2018. You know, we've, we've kind of been close. And, um, I just posted that scripture up. But see, it's spiritual because... She likes to kind of get my, I put it like this. She kind of likes to get my insight on things. Cause when she go through shit, that's, that's how people are in the world. Um, you know, when it comes to the men of the Lord, it's kind of like, ah, yeah, I, you know, I kind of hear what you're saying, but they don't really believe like that. You know, they, they just, but when they go through shit, when they go through something, then they want to come to you. And get some insight, some input. Um, but I posted Ephesians 6 and 12. For we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places but today now that was last week but today as i was meditating the thought came to me that myself and other brothers you know we we pull this scripture out a lot ephesians 6 and 12 but the thought came to me that last little part where it says against Spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. You 
Now, high places is what all of a sudden just stuck out to me. As many times as I've heard that scripture and I've read that scripture, high places on the left hand side. These demons are in high places. These are high level demons. Carnal, whether it, whether they be here on earth or just in the spiritual realm, we're dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. And those demons are getting ramped up and stronger as time go on, as we get closer to the end. That's why brothers are catching hell. Okay? And I know brothers are, and, you know, they, they come out and they, you know, they preach the word, they teach the word. You know, they upload their videos. They're, they're angry as hell and Esau is going to be destroyed. And, and you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of that which followeth. And it's Kwame, Yashallah, and, you know, we're going to take the kingdom, Daniel 7. I get that. But when you go home and it's just you, even if you're married, you got a wife, it's just you. You are are wrestling with, against, I mean, spiritual wickedness in high places. Those spiritual demons are going to attack you. They're going to attack your mind, tell you shit to try to throw you off. If they tempted Yahweh Shah or tried to attempt, excuse me, Satan tried to attempt, he, excuse me, he attempted to uh, tempt or persuade Yahweh Shah. You know, I, all these things I'll give you if you just bow down to me and worship me. That was the spiritual demon, Satan. That wasn't Esau. That was the spiritual demon, Satan, that tried that shit. But Yahweh Shah. Our Lord. So you got to keep that in mind. Okay. And I said I'm going to try to make this quick. But it just stuck out to me. You know the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is so cold man. He had me giving it. This is a woman. I, you know I don't expect her. I'm not. Expecting her to be like, oh, I'm an Israelite, Kwame or Charlotte. No, that's not what. But I just, because she was kind of like asking me about some of the things that I was going through in my life. And, you know, we talked. So I just, you know, I said, look, this is what I'm dealing with. Wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. I was letting her know this is what I'm going through. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. And she agreed with that and was like, damn, that's, you know, yeah, I'm with that. And she responded back a couple of times. I can't remember her exact um, words that she she wrote back, but she was in agreement like, damn, that's deep. Because she doesn't know the scriptures. She doesn't know the Bible. Okay. But she didn't buck up against it. She was like, no, that's, that's damn. You know. Like I said, she texts back a few times like, wow. And she knows that I'm an Israelite and I'm a man of the Lord and I believe in the scriptures. And she knows I'm not some goddamn Christian talking about God love everybody. And he sent his only begotten son to save the whole wide world. She know I'm not one of them niggas. She know me enough to know that. If you understand what I'm trying to say. Because, again, the, the, use the world but don't abuse the world. The, the Lord will put the spirit on certain people to, befri- to befriend you from this world. 
Okay, so it's not it's not a big deal. You understand? So, anyways, I just got to meditating on that that last part. We're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now that could be on the carnal level. You know, you could be going up against the judge. The judge could be, you know, you you go to court and the judge trying to put all kinds of charges on you. The jury, whatever. You got these demons on these people that you have to deal with on a daily basis. You got to deal with that shit. But you're also having to deal with these demons that are out here trying to plague your mind, attack your mind, and get you to go off. Because they've been given a, a, an assignment from the Lord. The Lord allows Satan to plague Job for a certain amount of time. He couldn't kill him. But he made his life hell. Where we are in that lot right now. We hate our lives until the death. We hate this goddamn place. Every day, I wish for the fucking destruction of this damn place. It can't happen soon enough for me. That's the truth. That's the reality. Okay. I want to get um, Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. Because this is another um, scripture I posted to her. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge also increases sorrow. And I first heard that scripture on a movie um, with Danny DeVito. Damn, I can't think of the name of it. Oh my goodness, my mind is slipping. Um... It was like a, in the 90s. I can't think of it right now. But it was a it was a comedy. It was an army comedy movie. Damn, I can't think of it as good as I know it. Um, it had Stacey Dash in it. Um, and the guy that played uh, Rakim in Juice. I can't think of the name of the damn movie. Um, it'll come back to me later. But anyways, um, he said it, you know, because it was like an army class that they had to take, some class they had to take. And the, the guy that played Rakim and Juice, um, he quoted this scripture in Ecclesiastes 1 and 18 um, because Danny DeVito's character was supposed to be the teacher. And he knew so much about Shakespeare and you know these different writers. But the dude that played Rakim and, and Juice, I can't think of his name right now. Um, he told him, he said, he that increases knowledge also increases sorrow. And Danny DeVito said, that Shakespeare? And he said, no, that's the Bible. And DeVito kind of like, looked back like, oh. Damn. And I forget what old boy said and, re, you know, after his reaction, but, you know, he basically let him know, look, there's a book that's even greater than any of these other books that you read, whether it be Shakespeare or Edgar Allan Poe or, you know, Stephen King or any of these other authors, the Bible supersedes all of these books. And it's greater than all of these books because knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy time. That's how we're going to make it. Okay. 
So I'm going to go back up to, and I went longer than I wanted to. I knew that would happen. That's the spirit. Anyway, um, I want to go back to, to Ephesians 6, and I want to go to the 13th verse. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh by Hashem Shah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the sword of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all pre um, pers perseverance, excuse me, perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. All right. So we're going to be going through this fiery trial an hour of temptation. Okay. But we have to believe that the Lord is with us. He brought us this far. We have to believe he's not going to let us down because Guess what? We don't have anything else. <laughs> we don't have anything else, man. This world is over. <laughs> All right? This world is over. And we're looking forward to the world to come. I said I didn't want to go no more than 10 minutes. And of course, I've already damn near reached 20. So, but anyways, um, I just wanted to give that quick little testimony. Um, you know, that, that happens a lot. I'll meditate on something and, you know, the Lord be like, look, go on, go, go, go record this, you know? Um, so anyway, that's that stay strong in the Lord. Okay. You don't have anything left in this world. This world is over. I'm going to get into a little bit of the news. Um, this came from Reclaim the Net. It says Israel deploys facial recognition program, utilizes Google Photos in Gaza. And um, one of the things that I don't really touch on it too much, but, um, you know, I don't. Fuck Esau. You know, Esau is getting too much credit in his world as it is. Um, his His technology is bullshit you know, compared to what the most high is going to bring and deliver. Okay. But, you know, the truth is that, you know, right now in our current captivity, we're going through this and we're dealing with this. This devil is a madman sparing none. Okay. As it says in the Apocrypha. Um, but um, again, from Reclaim the Net, Israel deploys facial recognition program, utilizes Google Photos in Gaza. Surveillance of citizens lacks consent, risks misidentifying individuals as militants. Okay, so what they're doing over there, besides the bombing, is they're testing out their technology. The same reason they're letting all these uh, so-called, so-called, so-called illegal immigrants across the border is um, they're going to set up a, they're going to set up a, um, what they call an AI wall, artificial intelligence wall. Um, so they, they create these crises, right? The problem, reaction, solution thing. They, they create these situations in order to bring in their uh, New World Order agenda, right? And um, 
So that's what you're seeing right now in Gaza. They're testing their technology. Because when they roll out the mark of the beast, which is the microchip. Okay, I'm going to say this again. Anybody that's telling you that the, the mark of the beast is something else than the microchip is a fucking lie. Especially now, here in 2024, there's no goddamn excuse. Okay, and if I'm being too vulgar, you know, maybe next week I'll be nicer. But the hell with this. Okay, there's no goddamn excuse anymore. Our job is to blow the trumpet and warn the people. Our job ain't to be Mr. Nice Prophet. You want nice? Go talk to T.D. Jakes. Maybe he'll swallow you up. You know? Go talk to one of these sodomite preachers. Maybe they'll say something nice to you. All right, this is what's coming. They're using this technology to bring in the mark of the beast, period. They're testing out their artificial intelligence surveillance right now because that's going to be linked and hooked up to the mark of the beast, period. That is the microchip that they're going to implant in you. Again, reclaim the net. Israel deploys facial recognition program, utilizes Google Photos in Gaza. Surveillance of the of citizens lacks consent because they're gonna do it without your permission. The same way they have these surveillance cameras up whenever you enter a store and now even in your own neighborhoods because everyone has the ring doorbell or the ring you know, system set up. So you're being recorded and monitored everywhere you go. And it says it risks misidentifying individuals as militants. Let that sink in and understand what that means. Okay? The sweeping implementation of a facial recognition initiative is stirring controversy in Gaza in the Gaza Strip with the government of Israel reported to have utilized this technology to create a um, surreptitious database of Palestinian individuals as disclosed by the Times this utilization of biometric technology occurred without the informed consent or awareness of Palestinian populace. Following the incidents of October the 7th, that's the day that supposedly, you know, Israel was attacked. You know, the, the small hatters were attacked, not us, not the true Israelites, but the small hatters were attacked over there last year in October, October the 7th. It says, following the incidents of October 7th, Israeli intelligence put this program into motion with two key techni uh, technological um, allies an in-house fashion by Corsite, a firm. <laughs> I'm not even going to go into that because I actually used to work in the building with them. Uh, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> an in-house tool fashioned by Corsite, a firm from Tel Aviv, and Google Photos. The operational goal was that, was the identification of persons linked with Hamas, and this is why they create these boogeymen, these straw men, these these uh fake enemies, which everyone that knows anything knows that 
Hamas and all these, uh, you know, whether, whether it be Hamas or um, what's the other one? ISIS. It's nothing but, uh, is, you know, Israel, uh, their version of the CIA. I'll say it like that. Okay. They have to pretend to be oppressed. We are the real people that are being oppressed. They have to make it look like they're under attack when we are the real people that are under attack. But they're using this as uh, as a way, as a means to bring about the mark of the beast with this facial recognition because that is going to lead to the mark of the beast. All of this surveillance what do you think it's there for? They're not doing it just, you know, yeah, they are, they are on a power trip, but it, but it's also leading to something. And that's what you need to understand. That's what you need to know. Also in some more news here. From the people's voice, it says CERN to test large Hadron Collider doing upcoming solar eclipse. And these devils are so proud. They're trying to um, create a black hole and bring uh, what they call demons in to, to the earth. This is how proud this goddamn devil is. You know, scientists working at the Large Hadron Hadron Collider operated by CERN have revealed that it will be fired up to search for hitting for hidden um, particles <clears throat> as the upcoming April 8th solar eclipse takes place. Now I'm going to release this, you know, after the 8th. But you get the point of what's going on here. Following a two-year hiatus, the world's largest and most powerful particle um, accelerator is set smash is set smash protons together to search for in, um, invisible particles secretly powering our universe. The machine, a large um, hydron collider, or it was called an LHC smashes protons into each other to bust them open and study the uh, subatomic particles inside them. So CERN is firing up <laughs> because <clears throat> they think that, look, Esau thinks he can take down the Most High or he can take down the angels of the Lord. That's how proud this devil is. All right. He doesn't just want to rule the earth. He wants to rule the heavens as well. Let's get. um Habakkuk 2 and 5. It says, yea, also because he transgressed, transgressed by wine. He is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. He won't even not only. Will he not keep himself in this earth, right? Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. But he is a proud man. He's so proud that he has to go into space. <laughs> or he has to try to, you know, fight against the angels in the heavens. That's how proud he is. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges. He who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. Because he wants to be God so bad. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. 
again, this devil is so proud. He really think he can take down the Most High and the Most High's angels. That's how proud he is. Shall not all these take up a, a proverb against him and a taunting proverb against him and say woe to him that increases that which is not his? How long? And to him that ladeth himself with the clay, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? And awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them, because thou hast spoiled, spoiled many nations, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high and he's trying he's trying to set his nest you know what he calls Mars the moon he's trying this devil is desperately trying because those that are in the know the, the wicked powerful elite of Esau know that they have but a short time and they're desperate see the average nigga don't know the average nigga don't even understand what's really going on right now he saw us losing his damn mind he's seeing prophecy being fulfilled right before his face and he's thinking that he can shortcut it or um get the advantage somehow by setting his nest on high He think he can X out the Lord and the prophecies of the Most High. That's how Esau thinks. Okay. It says, um, Woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his net on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. And this whole continent, the United States of America, um, even southern and central America is built on blood. Okay? It's built on blood. And one of the things with Esau is they don't want to deal with this because then they have to ask themselves, well, if, you know, if the Lord isn't going to forgive us, what we, what we did to the Native Americans that were already here and how we and how they um, how they um, brought the <laughs> the so-called Negroes over here by way of slave ships and what they did to the Latinos they're going to have to pay for that they don't want to deal with that so in their mind in their pathetic little minds, they think, well, if we just cut the most high off, if we're able to go into space and set up our nest, plant our flag up there, then we can avoid prophecy. That's how carnal Esau is. This is the devil that you're dealing with. The same devil that you, you, you monkey niggers are in the Christian church saying can be saved right along with you. They hate you. They hate your guts. But yet, you as the nigger that you are will sit there and pray for them. God loved everybody. God created everybody. Yeah, he created everybody and everything, but he doesn't love everybody and everything. 
And if you're attached to this devil, you're going to get his wrath. You're going to drink of the wine, of this devil that you've attached yourself to and aligned yourself with. They know this. I Shalom is Brother Yashima Zakar from the Israelite Report, IsraeliteTimes.com upon my watch. All praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing truth and sincerity. I want to um just go and, you know, uh do a little spill right quick. Um I've been watching um a little bit. Uh, the uh, the outcry from these Edomites because Putin revealed the true identity of the children of Israel and the son of the Most High, the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. And they revealed, Putin revealed, I should say, through, through the um, Russian icons that the son of the Lord, the son of the Most High is a black man, right? And so these Edomites have been losing their goddamn mind. And reportedly, I don't know how true it is, but you've had um, these Edomites losing their shit, going crazy, um, burning Bibles. So you brothers can look that up for yourself if if you haven't seen it already. I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of you have. Those brothers be on their watch and um you know they they pretty much see everything that I'm talking about but um but yeah, man. These Edomites are butt hurt, crying like little hoes. And I said it before and I'll say it again. Esau is a bitch. Crying like a little bitch. Crying like a little hoe. You've been in rulership for all this time. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And your wicked ass has been in rulership for all this time. And instead of you manning up and saying, look, even if we are, even if we are at the end of this thing, I'm going to go out like a soldier. I'm going to fall on my sword. No, what do you do? You go and burn the Bible just because you find out that the man that you call Jesus Christ is really a black man. Esau is a little bitch. A crying little hoe. Okay, all the shit that we've been through. Slavery, Jim Crow. Alright? All of all the 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 black men have been Arrested under false uh, accusations. People lying on us. You know, you can think of Emmett Till. That's just one example, but there's many. Look at what they did to... um. Uh, shit, escaped my mind. Um, Black Wall Street down in um, Oklahoma. Uh, the... Tuskegee Airmen experiment, giving them syphilis. Hell, even um, with the C nineteen, the the um, the vax, you know, the shot. I'm trying to get my channel struck, um, taken down. But the but the um, you know, the shot. Who did they offer it to? The blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I ain't dead yet. I'm telling the truth. And then they come out two years later because it came out in 2020, right? December 2020. And I'm going to say about 2022, late 2022. Then they start coming out with the evidence that it causes, you know, different uh, ailments. I'll say it that way. I'm trying to keep my channel. Right? But then they brush it, you know, under the rug. They sweep it under the rug. But who did they offer it to first? The blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. So Esau has got some goddamn nerve to be sitting here crying like a little bitch. Just because he found out that the true Messiah 
the only begotten son of the Most High, is a dark-skinned man that looks nothing like the portrait, the painting that they have of this guy, Caesar Bourget, the faggot. Okay, and I slipped up and said it, but yeah, the sodomite, homo, cuck, piece of shit. Okay, the sodomite, Caesar Bourget, that the world has, you know, most of these Christian churches, they have this sodomite. <laughs> I want to say something. The sodomite laying up on, you know, uh, um, hanging up on their, um, on their walls. I really want to say something. Okay. For all these years, they had the whole world to see. For all these years. And now they find out he's really a dark skinned man, a black man. But they don't even want to say that because they want to say, well, he was a dark-skinned man. He could have been East, you know, he could have been uh, Middle Eastern, or something like that. Then they can kind of still kind of say, well, he's not really black. He's not like, you know, you so-called African-American blacks. But Esau is crying like a little hoe, like a little bitch, crying, burning Bibles. There was this pastor in Tennessee, and I'm pretty sure you brothers have seen it. Who brought out that his church, he, they had 200 Bibles laid out. And some group came and burned the Bibles up. Now, I don't know what it was for, but it's just awfully suspicious to me that it is after uh, Putin, this guy Putin, reveals through the Russian icons that the true Israelites are black. But he, he did that, in my opinion, just to give a middle finger to Israel because right now Russia is at odds with Israel, right? The least of the flock should draw them out. And Russia is a guard unto these nations, okay? So Russia, the Lord put the spirit on Russia, right? Putin is the leader, but on Russia, it, the, the military of Russia, to go to war with the West. And I'm loving every minute of it. But meanwhile, Esau is crying like a little bitch. Okay? And I want to get this in Malachi 1 and 14. It says, but curse be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and voweth a sacrifice, 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 I'll say it like that, unto the Lord, a corrupt thing, right? He voweth and sacrifices and unto the Lord a corrupt thing, for I am a, a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. The Lord's name is dreadful among the heathen. And in this case, even the image. Right? Everything about the Lord is dreadful to the heathen. And we are the sons of the Most High. That's uh, Exodus, uh, uh, what is that? Is that 40, 22? Might have to get it now that I said it. Um, let me see. Is that Exodus 40 and 22? It's been a long time since I got it. Uh, no, that's, I believe that's Exodus 4 and 22. Yeah, there it is. Exodus 4 and 22. It says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Mm. So we're the sons of the Most High. 
We're the sons of the Most High. Which is why they hate us so much. You understand? We're set apart. We're holy. Holy means to be set apart. We're supposed to be set apart from these heathens. That's why they hate you so much. It's in their spirit to hate you. So when those devils learn that the true Israelites, the true sons of the most high power, well, so-called black men and Latino and Native Americans, because you got to remember these Edomites and these other nations, especially these Edomites, have done the Latinos dirty and the Native Americans dirty. And they made fun of all of us, but especially the, the so-called black man. They did us real dirty. But the Latinos, okay, the conquistadors, um, what they did with the Native Americans, with the Trail of Tears, pushing them out of their land, pushing them on reservations, laughing, mocking. You know, they have Thanksgiving, they celebrate. And that's mockery. They're making mockery of the what they did to the Native American the Native American tribes. Okay? So for them to do all of that and to find out that oh shit. The man they call Christ is really a black man. Oh man, that that fucks them up. Cause now they gotta go, oh shit, what do we do? What if he wants revenge? What if he's going to come back? See, you got to think like them. Right? You have to think like them. You have to put yourself in their shoes. Because the average nigga be like, I don't understand why they're so mad. So what if Christ is a black man? Okay. What the big deal? No. See, the devil, this, this Edomite, is in a situation where he's like, we're fucked. Because they know what they've done. They have the records. You don't know. You niggas don't know nothing. You niggas don't know nothing. They have the records. They know what they did to you. They know how they separated you. They know how they turned you against your brother, even though it was the spirit. Because the Lord allowed you, you, you devils, excuse me. The, the, the uh, Lord allowed you devils to do what you did. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. So you rule for a short time. That's, you know. But in, in, in the mind of these actual Edomites, they say, shit, wait a minute. If, if, because they say Christ, you know, I'm, I'm, his name is Yahweh Shah, but they're thinking if Jesus Christ is a black man and we did all this dirty shit to black people, we're fucked. So now their response is to burn the Bible. Mm. See, Esau is carnal. He's carnal minded like that. See, in his head, he think if, you know, if I burn the Bible, that'll, that'll get rid of the problem. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, it doesn't work that way. The Lord doesn't. The Lord doesn't go away. See that? That's how carnal Esau is. The Lord doesn't doesn't work that way. Just because you burn the Bible, you know, the spirit is still alive. Okay. Um. So, anyways, um, you know, I just wanted to uh, kind of like touch on that a little bit, um, because Esau is acting like a little bitch he really is he's acting like uh like he hasn't been in rulership like he can't believe his kingdom is going down i'm talking about those edomites that are wise enough to see it okay because there's certain edomites that are able to see look man this shit is falling apart all right 
they're able to see it, man. They're able to see that something's happening. Uh, things aren't what they used to be. It, you know, these aren't the good old days is what I'm trying to say. And I say it all the time. I'll say it again. You, a lot of you niggas, you're just out of the loop, man. Niggas are stuck on stupid. They really don't understand um, what's really going on. But these Edomites are looking and they're going, what the what the hell is, how do we fall this low? But they don't want to say it out loud. They don't want, uh, you, especially you niggas, they don't want you niggas to know. They don't want these other nations to know, these other heathens to know um, just how far, how far down um, they have fallen. Okay. All right. But this is where they are, man. They're in a state of panic. Okay, they are in a state of panic. I want to get Jeremiah 22 and 13. It says, Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Now, you're going to tell me that Esau paid the slaves? They paid the Native Americans off. Yeah, put them on reservations. That's paying them off. Giving them little casinos here and there. That's paying them off. No, I don't think so. And look at what they're doing to the Latinos in South and Central America. How they, and how they take out their, their leaders and install these puppet leaders. How they allow these cartels to rule. These women have to sell their bodies. This this is really happening. The um these women down there in South Central America have to sell their bodies just to, you know, provide for their families. And it's a sad thing. And I I'm not gonna go, you know, deep, you know, deep dive into that. But Esau's an asshole, man. And this asshole is about to get taken out. Fuck him. Real shit. And fuck you niggas that are with them, too. I can't stand these niggas, man. And I don't, I don't like to get over here and just say that shit every day. But I see niggas every day, especially in D.C. Because fuck D.C. I see niggas in D.C. every goddamn day. They walk around like Esau. They walk around with their fucking head up like, 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 like they just... You know, like they got that Carlton Banks, like, nigga, I hate you. I hate you. And the Lord hates you too. I can't hate you more than the Lord hates you. You know, you think, you know, and people say, oh, no, you shouldn't have that attitude, brother. You're supposed to love your brother. No, the Lord hates you more. You have no idea, man. But you have no idea. Right? You, The Lord can't wait. The Lord can't wait to, to take out. Um, <clears throat> the, the Lord can't wait to take out two-thirds of our people and these goddamn heathens, man. Especially these Edomites. I'm gonna get um I'm gonna get this right quick because it's been on my spirit. This is uh Luke twelve and forty nine, just to help you to understand how the Lord feels. It says, I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it if it be already kindled? I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? The the Lord Wants to get at you fucking two third niggas. He hates you more than I hate you. No, he not all love all the time. It's not just love, love, love. That's not what it is, man. You've been lied to. He hates you. Yeah, I believe uh, King David said, 
you know, do if not, I hate them that hate thee. He told the most high, do if I not hate them that hate thee. Roughly paraphrasing. He said, he, he said, I hate them with a perfect hatred. A perfect hatred. <laughs> you can't hate more than that. I hate them with a the perfect hatred. So yeah, my hatred is justified. According to the Holy Scriptures. I hate you two-third niggas. And I hate Esau, Edom. All of them, man. You know? And and like I said, you can't hate more than the Lord hates. <laughs> 